we've uh, kind of prided ourselves over being able to, and that that didn't feel really quite as there you go. as much of an oomph to it. <laughs> we prided ourselves in being able to make this thing not just transport to environment, be able to survive an environment, but print an environment, including on the back of a truck, or in this case, the back of a Humvee, amphibious combat vehicle, shipboard in ocean and multiple different sea states, yeah. be able to print consistently, even if some clown like myself is coming over and lifting it and hitting it against the <laughs> table and beating it up. Hey everybody, I'm here with Eric Chanel from Crater. Uh, Eric, if you talk about yourself a little bit and what do you do at Crater, and uh, then we dive into the story of how Absolutely. you guys came about. My name is Eric Chanel, I'm the founder and CEO of Crater. At Crater, we're working to develop expeditionary 3D printers or rugged portable systems that can manufacture critical parts at the point of need, no matter where that point of need might be in the world. That's amazing. So your customers would be who? Primarily, we've been working with the Department of Defense. We've had a close connection with the U.S. Marine Corps, the Navy, and the Army through a cooperative research and development agreement. In fact, this system right here, the Field Fab, was developed in direct collaboration on board at Camp Pendleton, where we worked Marines every single day, testing, iterating, deploying 3D printed capabilities. This is kind of the polished, refined capability that came out of all that collaboration. That's awesome. It's not many companies that are working directly with the Marines in the field. I know you guys went to Japan, you went to the desert at one point, right? You went to a mountain uh, to actually test this thing out and do the development work, and that's that's pretty incredible. Nobody's 3D printer is being developed in the field in that type of way, uh, and that's a really fascinating story. How did you decide you wanted to build something like this that's an, an expeditionary system? Absolutely, yeah. So we originally started as strategic technical advisors to the U.S. Marine Corps. So about seven years ago, we first were introduced to a group of Marines out of Camp Pendleton. They were first trying to test the grant waters of expeditionary 3D printing. Rugged, portable systems to be able to deploy into environment. Problem is, nothing really existed like that. Sure. They were taking commercial off-the-shelf systems. They were trying to do the best with what they could. Mm-hmm. And they were not engineers. They were a bunch of young guys that were trying to figure it out. So we spent time integrated with them. We're working on everything from reverse engineering, fire identification, to modifying commercial office health printers. Yeah. And from there, we saw really both the promise of 3D printing in a deployed environment, but also the limitations. We saw how sensitive they could be to temperature fluctuations, humidity. In fact, we are out along the coast, and whenever the fog would come in in the afternoon, our prints would immediately fail. Right. So we knew that something had to be done to actually develop a system that could do that. So we formed Crater with that goal in mind, to develop hardware that can not only survive but thrive in environments. Not just be transported through the environment, but actually print in the environment. It took a long time for us to get there. As I sure. said, we started seven years ago, yeah. and we started to formally collaborate directly with these groups. And this is the result of that kind of testing iteration. As you mentioned, multiple field tests, mm-hmm. both within the United States and beyond the United States. That's amazing. Really testing it, putting it in the hands of Marines, and seeing what breaks, what doesn't, and making it so it doesn't break. So it doesn't break. Twice. Yeah. <laughs> What's uh, what does the name mean, crater? Where did that come from? Crater is a bit of a play on words. It's, okay. uh, it's really unfortunately it's not too complicated. <laughs> Creator and crate and kind of the the application in this and this is kind of a big old great. Okay. Field Fab is a little bit more on the nose, right? Yeah. When it comes to the name. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Outside of DoD. Department of Defense applications. What other applications are you seeing for a machine like this that's fully ruggedized? Absolutely. We're currently beginning to research some other applications. DOD is kind of our home. It's where we started. It's where we developed this. And really where we had to develop this because if it could handle a Marine, then it can absolutely handle just about anything else sure. that, uh, anyone could throw at it. And we've just now started to look into other applications. For example, we started working with the researchers that are at sea for months at a time mm. that need a capability like this to be able to do their research on sensor platforms out in the middle of the ocean. Other applications that we've seen have begun to dip our feet into, but haven't really explored quite as much as the oil and gas and renewable industry. So you can imagine oil platforms, or you can right. imagine different rigs and uh, being able to support them on site. Or you can imagine putting these on the back of the trucks, trucks 
that service the wind farms or mm -hmm. the solar installations. Yeah. There's a lot of applications just all over the district. Shipping and transportation is another big one. Rail is recently beginning to adopt 3D printing in massive form and being able to support kind of as close to where parts break as possible reduces the cost of the supply chain, and overall increases uptime of critical infrastructure, like rail, like shipping, cross the right. uh, cross Atlantic, cross Pacific. That's amazing. You mentioned uh, in the back of a truck. I know you guys have done some tests in the back of trucks, right, where you're actually printing while the truck's driving along, yeah? Yes, we have. In fact, we've, uh, if you actually want to grab that. Uh, yeah, uh, so if you move uh, some of these things out of the way. That one right there. Yeah. <laughs> We, we've uh, kind of prided ourselves over being able to, and that, that didn't feel really quite as, there you go. as much of an oomph to it. <laughs> we prided ourselves in being able to make this thing not just transport to environment, to be able to survive the environment, but print an environment, including on the back of a truck, or in this case, the back of a Humvee, amphibious combat vehicle, shipboard in ocean and multiple different sea states, yeah. be able to print consistently, even if some clown like myself is coming over and lifting it and hitting it against the table and beating it up. Or driving down a really rough road, right? Exactly. Or in the lack of a road. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And be able to print off-road as you move between environments. Yeah. Because just because the park is going to take eight hours doesn't mean that you need to stay in one place mm. and print for, eight, print hours. for eight hours. And for yeah. our warfighters, that's impossible. Right. Right? It's They can't just be unable to move a convoy because, sorry, sir, right. we got a print going. It's yeah. going to take another six hours to print. Yeah. So that's kind of been our answer to that problem mm -hmm. is building a system that can go with them as they need it and print those critical parts when they... I moved this out of the way when you were doing the drop test, but uh, <laughs> tell me about this award. What is this for? So this is the award for Expeditionary Tactical 3D Printing provided from uh, DSI. And really through the AM community, the, uh, through the military out of manufacturing stuff. We were honored to receive this award this year at the uh, 2024 nice. uh, Military Out of Manufacturing Summit, or MILAM, yeah. as we like to call it. And it was a recognition for the work that we had done in direct collaboration with our warfighters. One of the things that's really unique about the collaboration that we've done is the level of integration we've had with our warfighters, both the Marine Corps, the Army, the Navy, through that cooperative research development agreements. It's not an exaggeration to say that we've got an office space aboard Camp Pendleton, yeah. and it's a 20-foot expandable shelter. That we developed this with those Marines on site. Yeah. And through that, that's what has enabled FieldBAP to really be developed and polished for these applications. And this right here is really not just a recognition of Crater, it was a recognition of the entire collaboration that we have, both with our government partners, our war fighters, and also with our industry partners, yeah. like yourself. The, uh, you're probably familiar with the term, get to the Gemba, which is like a lean manufacturing concept of, if you want to solve a problem, you really want to go to the place where the problem needs to be solved, right? And that's how one of the ways that Toyota, over time, decreased their failure rate from quite high Right in the 70s and 60s, they were known as, as a low quality car, and now globally they're recognized as, as the leader in quality. Right, and getting to the Gemba was a big part of that. Going to the place where the problem was occurring, it's exactly what you guys have done with the ex expeditionary point of need stuff. Is working, embedding with the Marines, and figuring out their problems on hands, on site, going through the same stuff that they're going through as you know as civilians, but embedded with the Marine Corps. So. Very, very cool. Applaud you guys for what you've done in that in that regard. We've also worked together, obviously. We built a print head for you guys. A print core is what you guys call it. Absolutely. Uh, talk to me about the print core. Absolutely. So this is the print core that we developed with your team. We've been a long time fans of Slice. Uh, originally, I think you and I first met at a Milam. At Milam, yeah. Ago, and it was more of me as a kind of a fan of like, hey, I love your guys' products and I, I use it. Uh, but from there, we actually developed into using your guys' product directly on the first prototypes that we had of what it would eventually become Field Fab. Yeah. And we were had the opportunity last year to actually sit down and work directly with your team. And instead of just taking what you kind of had already on the market and tuning our system around that, being able to actually build our system and your uh, current capabilities together to really optimize it. And that yeah. the result of that collaboration is the print core here. Yeah. So the print core integrates a Magnum hot end or 
Magnum, Magnum Plus. Plus. Yeah. Sorry. Um, with an Algae X from Bond Tech. And we're able to essentially shrink the package down enough to be able to fit into the really tight area. One of the things that was really important to us is that we have to use, we have very limited footprint space to make this man portable. Right. But we want a foot by foot by foot ish cubed print space. And to do that, we had to really shrink down the entire package that was being moved around. The other part to that is it couldn't really be too heavy because this thing is the mass that's moving around and being vibrated and shocked around. Mm -hmm. And to have something too heavy means that it would be more susceptible to that shock and vibration. So we worked closely with you guys, with, yeah. uh, with the team here, to be able to shrink this down into a really tight package that had everything we need on it. Everything from an accelerometer on it so that we can track the movements and, and actually two accelerometers to eventually be able to implement uh, motion smoothing on various different axes here. But also to integrate the full layer cooling and a lot of the different sensors that we integrate into this platform to allow us to do our process control and our quality assurance. Yeah, awesome. That was a super fun collaboration with you guys to bring our engineering team in. You guys had, obviously, a unique set of design inputs around shock and vibration, and it was awesome to be able to take some of our available components, put it together in a package that fit with your guys' needs, and, and uh, we just really enjoyed the project. It was great. Quick shout-out to Greg, who uh, was the lead engineer, design engineer on that project. We overcame some pretty unique challenges to make it easily swappable, to have a great user experience from a hot swap standpoint, and also be able to do bed leveling the way that you guys wanted to do it uh, with, with pressure sensing. Yeah. Absolutely. And and while it had its challenges, it was made easier by the fact that we started with a, a hot end extruder system that we'd already test and proven and that really is already hardened to a certain right. extent. Yeah. It was an easy place to start from and really that's what enabled us to really shoot for and kind of go above and beyond with some of the more advanced challenges that yeah. we wanted to get, get after there. So Absolutely. Thanks, Greg, for all the late nights that I'm sure that you spent <laughs> were making that happen. <laughs> so you guys recently passed the mill standard 810 test, right? Mm -hmm. So this thing is fully ready to, to go and be deployed with the Marines. Absolutely. We have else. formally beaten this thing up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anywhere from a negative 40 degree environment, and that'd be C or F, to 120 degree Fahrenheit environment. We've been able to prove this and actually operate the system in that environment. And that includes printing parts. So it's operationally certified to be able to manufacture those critical parts in that wide range of temperatures and various humidities as well. We've also beaten it up in a ground transportation vibration test. It's kind of a random vibration test where it's shaken all around in a semi-operational state. And then a shock test, which is hitting it with up to 20 Gs of force. Wow. Now that is an operational shock test, but there is a version of it where we've done a little bit more manually <laughs> on the back of a Humvee where we were able to subject the system up to 6 Gs of force while printed. And we were fully successful in printing up until 6 Gs. At 6 Gs of force, it was still printing, uh, but you can imagine at that point we started to see some layer shifting. Yeah. Uh, which six Gs of force is... That's, that's pretty intense. Quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, pilots pass out in nine Gs of right. force. Yeah. Right, so. <laughs> yes. that's, uh, that's quite a bit. To be able to pray at that, we're, we're pretty happy. Yeah, that's, that's quite insane. Thanks, Eric, for, for walking us through this. Where can people find out more information about Field Fab or about Crater? Absolutely. You can find out more at our website, crater.com, uh, and you can learn a lot more about Field Fab through kind of materials we've included there. Awesome. And you can also check out our socials. Uh, we're most prevalent on LinkedIn, but we're trying to get a little bit better at some of the other ones as well, awesome. where you can see a little bit more of the system in action and kind of what we're doing and keep up to us on a day-to-day -day basis. Awesome. Thanks, Eric. It's been a pleasure working with you guys, and Thanks, uh, awesome to see this machine here on display at Rapid. And here's to the next one. Yeah, that's right, man. Let's do it. <laughs>